Ah, there it is. There it is. Now it's all on record. George Winston. George Winston. George Winston did it. I'm sure he did it. All, I thought he wrote this. it. We can go some skating, right? <laughs> <clears throat> Oh. <clears throat> right. <laughs> so we we uh, poor poor uh, our director here, Maxim, is uh, thinks he needs like a good intro piece, and then and then um, Maha will start, right? Yeah. So maybe give us a a nice uh, music introduction, and then I will take the words <laughs> afterwards. All right, well, why, why don't we go some skating? That's a little bit more timeless than, <laughs> than Christmas <Hey>. time is here. <laughs> All right, ready? Ready. <laughs> Hello and welcome everyone and um, we're happy to uh, have you here all today, Professor David Aldrich, Professor Monika Herzig and uh, Professor uh, Maxim Bilecki. Uh, welcome to this short video on the newly published article in the British Journal of Management. The paper is entitled Improvisation and Innovation in Teams, The Jazz Effect. Hello, everyone. So, yeah. Shall I start with the questions directly? Yes. Okay, so let's start. What is the Jazz Jam session, uh, session model and how it can be used to improvise and create new music? So I guess I should probably summarize that. So it's a model that I uh, pulled out of research looking at jazz jam sessions and how musicians get together in a setting where your goal is to come up with a new solution for um, the problem of creating a un unique way of interpreting a piece of music and getting together with people that you never performed with before. So by uh, observing and, and looking at it, we came up with uh, seven factors that seem to guide that grouping every time. And um, I'll just summarize the seven factors real quick because they're the principles guiding on how it can be transferred to any other models. So first, you want to get the best people possible. You know, knowledge is key. So gather the group is only as good as the weakest link. Second, what we saw is, of course, that jazz musicians like what I do on a daily basis, I train my brain to take those risks because I, I go into situations where I have to improvise and, and just go for it. And there's been studies that show that it can be trained. There's a muscle, there's the prefrontal cortex that goes into action and just moves ahead and this whole um, divergent thinking goes into action. So train your brain to improvise. The third is this constant exchange, dem democratic exchange of somebody stepping forward while everybody else um, supports. And you have this constant uh, support exchange system and giving everybody equal chances to have their voices heard. 
then there's a mentoring system in place where the elders who have more experience guide the ones with less experience and exchange that. Then uh, you have community support, meaning where you're located plays a role. You know, if you're in a little town in Indiana that doesn't know about jazz, it's much harder to get the support and, and the feedback and find a place than if you're in the middle of New York where you have 40 jazz That's clubs. Great. And it's easy to, to do that. And then the final factor is there's a constant evaluation system in place with cues, with guidance. So even though you're going forward and you're going into this situation improvising and just doing your divergent thinking, you give cues, okay, this is going too long. You know, we need to finish this song. Somebody needs to get off the stage because they don't know what they do. So this continuous guidance. So those are the seven factors that, that guide this idea. That's very creative. <laughs> I like how you put it together. And uh, it seems to be uh, merging a little bit with the problem solving strategies and how you get people who are interested to listen or to learn into a sort of a focus group. You bring all people in to create something together, the creator and the users as well, right? It's a, it's a fantastic toolbox to use if you need to get together as a group with the goal of, of coming up with a solution or just coming up with new ideas. So, you know, it's, it's not something where you can say, okay, we'll do this and this and this and we'll be creative, mm -hmm. but it's kind of a checklist, you know, where you can right. look at a group and say, well, this is not working. Let's see, maybe we don't have the best people or maybe we're not giving everybody an equal chance to say something or, you know, the, the youngsters are taking over. So it's kind of a checklist to see if you can mold the process towards a better outcome. Wow, that's cool, right? Absolutely. I, I wonder, how did you, how did you think this up, Monica? Or did, did you learn this in the, uh, at the, um, Jacob's School of Music. Does every musician know this? And we're the only ones who didn't know this. Where, how did this occur to you? I, I didn't think this up. We did tons of interviews and, and, and looked at jam sessions. And this was, you know, the late David Baker, who was one of our guiding fathers in jazz and jazz education. He actually was part of it and helped me because people talk to him in a different way and they open up in a different way. So we had all these interviews and we had, um, you know, all these a huge survey on what do you think is important? You know, what makes it work? What do you do when you go in a jam session to, so no, it's not made up. <laughs> it's, it's, not improv it's not improvisation. <laughs> it's, not, it's not improvised. There's, there's a knowledge base to that. <laughs> Monica, I, re I read your papers and uh, you mentioned something that hundreds of jazz musicians were interviewed in different parts of the US. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, both, I, mean, I, I would imagine pianists and trumpets and drummers and all playing different musical instruments coming from different backgrounds. Uh, and that's, uh, that, that, that was aggregated into that seven factor model. Mm -hmm. Is that right? That's right. <laughs> so, so, and, and that what inspired people like like myself who are mainly in entrepreneurship and management to take that and there's been a long conversation about the jazz metaphor for of entrepreneurship and that the jazz musician and entrepreneur things differently for their from the rest of the musicians or the rest of, of the business people and so how is that that's why understanding the way the jazz musician create the music and then try to translate it into the language of business, into the language of management and entrepreneurship and see, well, if those, if we can find, uh, if we can look at the team uh, uh, as a startup, um, as, a, as a jazz band, um, let's say two, three, four, up to eight people that's in our paper playing together and uh, co-creating the value together they would interact and they, they are in the very beginning. So they are from maybe from the year, just since the establishment up to seven years since the establishment. So that is the main startup we are looking at. Would, if they would adopt this framework, the jazz jam session framework, 
um, the knowledge that they have through investment in R&D, for example, or hiring people with university degree. Improvisation, investing in creative training. So being continuous training, continuous um, a generation of new ideas. Having the leadership, introducing new methods of new forms of leadership. Mentorship, so having this in place, the mentoring system in their, in their teams and, and, and all sorts of democracy and collaborating within that system. And we all have this, the data from the companies, the teams that can uh, introduce and can be used as a measurement of, of that each, each element. And then you also speak, talk about a lot about the impact of the community. The people going crazy around and they, yeah, go for it. And they, you know, cheering and clapping. And that's, we see, how do the companies collaborate with other people? How do they respond to other stakeholders and, and the, 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 within the open innovation framework? So by kind of mapping together these internal and external factors, we, we were able in this, in this paper on, on the team innovation and improvisation, the jazz effect, to, to match them together and to see what is, how, is that, in a, in, if we are able to improvise and set all that factors in, 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 the, uh, in the company, in the team, are we able to be more innovative, going for more radical sorts of innovation? And the answer is absolutely yes. The answer is absolutely yes. Moreover, it's improvisation that is leading the way to innovation. And the rest of the model, that, that's what we empirically found, that the rest of the factors, community factors and, and company or team factors, they would further positively moderate the improvisation. So an increase in those factors will also enhance, um, accelerate the impact of, of improvisation on, on innovation performance of teams. Uh, but again, more of it is in the paper. And I just want to say that we immensely, immensely benefit by, benefited by this intercultural and interdisciplinary uh, research, which comes straight from the minds of the jazz musician into the hands and, and heart of, of entrepreneurs, uh, the way they, they, they do business. Um, so uh, I would just, just you know, call everyone to read this paper and, and to find their way, their jazz effect for their business. Um, right, I'm back to Maha, if, uh, if you've got any more questions left. Well, me. one thing, Train, the, you are so right. The key element there is that improvisation, you know, often it's the growth mindset idea and the goal of training every day, just like you train to work out and, and you know, do everything where you want to be fit to train that muscle every day in some way to move forward and take those risks. I think that's a huge takeaway. It's something like J uh, David says, is it come from the Jacobs? You, 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 you improvise because you've learned it in the Jacobs School of, of Music. You say, well, of course it's Jacobs School of Music is my knowledge, but it's about practicing every day. And that you, I like that, Monica, you, you have this expression, uh, kind of jumping off the cliff, going for it. You know, that, that drive that makes you take that risk and try this new note or the new market or the new customer or the, the new knowledge, uh, you know, this go for it mentality. Um, that, that sounds like it, it's, you know, it's very, very useful for, for jazz musicians, but also for entrepreneurs. And in fact, I think there's so much in common between entrepreneurs and jazz musicians. I, I, I'm, I'm sure David, David has, uh, yeah, David, go ahead. I just have to, I had to, I just have one comment here. I just uh, watched a video for uh, Elon Musk who was saying just a few days ago, he said that if we try to limit the improvisation and, and, and punish everyone who makes mistakes or commits failure in the entrepreneurial process, then there is no room for innovation because innovation comes from this way of disruption and improvisation and trying and failure and error and then you come up with new solutions and new ideas. So yeah, that's, that, that makes so much sense. So I have a question for David now. Mm -hmm. Would managers want to adopt the jazz model and how can it help entrepreneurs to innovate? It's a great question. And you know, let me just say first that it's, it's such a, a pleasure 
and honored to be part of a, a paper with two creative thinkers and artists like Monica and, and Maxime. And in some ways you have a case of uh, life imitating art. You know, so why would managers want to adapt the um, improvis improvisation model of innovation? And you know, one answer uh, is actually many of them don't. It's the last thing they want to do because to embrace the improvis improvisation model means they give up control. And a lot of managers don't want to give up control. Now, what that means is they're probably less likely to succeed as entrepreneurs because to be entrepreneurial means to, it is, and Monica said this, uh, Maxim said this, to be uh, entrepreneurial is almost consummating with improvis improvisation. You know, to be an entrepreneur means to, and to be involved in the entrepreneurial process means to come up with something that nobody's quite put together before. You may be able to do it yourself. That happens a lot. Although, who is it who said famously, no person is an island um, uh, that says, yeah, in the end, everybody's getting inspiration. But that says, yeah, if the entrepreneur or the wise, uh, probably successful manager realizes by relinquishing control and adapting the improvisation model uh, uh, that we see in jazz, they're going to be a lot more. It's a it's a process. Monica just explained this. It's a process that is uh, a catalyst for novelty newness, originality, all of the elements that are at the heart of innovation. So, you know, it's almost a paradox. Managers is almost a mount. If you go way back to the manager revolution, the whole idea of management is to protect yourself against improvisation. But in fact, what fuels innovation is in improvisation. That's what probably makes entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship different than the classical management, uh, hierarchical management mo model. A really good question, thanks. I think also that this goes directly to the bootstrapping uh, phase. I was just gonna say, which is at the heart of your own PhD yeah, thesis, right? Yeah, where, where every entrepreneur is trying their best to improvise and to try anything and everything in every way, just to make the product works and make it happen and create the company, there are no rules. You're just trying your best in every possible direction. And this is completely going along with improvisation, right? With the caveat, I think in the improvisation model, right, Monica, there's always more than one person. No person, it takes a village. Not necessarily. No, 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 no. You, you do that by yourself. I mean, the, the, the ability to improvise is your own personal training. And, you know, I advise just the, the process of journaling every day is, is one way to, to train that muscle, you know, just capturing ideas just to walk home a different way and observe something you know you're the best at it when you come and you say oh i just read in this journal in the airplane in the housewife section this <laughs> this <laughs> new thing i mean you know you, you're going out of the way in a completely new area and and you you do that come on come on, come on monica come on monica we're, we're being recorded here <laughs> Yeah, but that's, that's what you do to grab your ideas on a regular basis and everybody can do that. Yeah. It's like an artist, like an actor or an actress who is observing personalities, observing but, different people and behavior and response. And then they are able to, to formulate a sort of characters in their minds that they can use when they need to improvise, right? But you know, it's well, be, to be ready to go. Because, you know? You know, we know it's almost as cliche these days with, with the generation of Maxim and, and uh, uh, Maha. They're always going on about mindfulness, mindfulness, mindfulness. But it's funny, Monica, what you're talking about is almost 
the opposite of mindlessness of getting inspiration or right yeah journaling observation Be, being open yeah. yeah collecting a reserve that you can reuse in the future that's mm -hmm. that's wow okay I have a every morning when you yeah. wake up you have that moment those few moments where your mind goes oh 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 connect the dots and you daydream and if you can just make it a habit to capture those moments there's so much gold in it you know and let that happen that's awesome i, I have a question for monica uh, we know that also innovation takes time. Of course, we say knowledge is needed and there are other factors. Innovation takes time to realize, envisage innovation and, and then actualize it. When you're playing jazz, um, when you are there on the, on the stage or, or in a jam session, you don't have that much time to, to think rather than you need to you know, keep on playing and improvise. Uh, and in doing so, you create new music. So where where this the, the where is the time aspect? So my question is: Do we need time to improvise, to learn improvising, or to improvise and create music? Or in fact, we we you know we we may take our time to to practice, and then once we're on the stage, then we don't need time. So you know, where, where is the time dimension in improvisation? The time dimension, you know, it's it's I'm I'm at it now for some 40 years and I'm still working on it, meaning that's a continuous process. That's what I mean with this practicing it every day. When the moment comes when you need to come up with something or you create something, you do not have time. And usually when you need improvisation is in a crisis, when, when all things fall apart and you have to react quickly. That's when you need the 40 plus years prior where you gathered all this information and where you got this improvisation muscle ready to connect the dots when you need it. And then you need the time afterwards because the idea is just the two percent right and then there's the 98 percent perspiration where, <laughs> where you have to figure out how to put that idea in practice and get your model ready and try it out and and all that part so there's all the time around it <laughs> and kids as well kids are are, are great improvisers some they don't yeah they, they really don't have this his, history or this accumulation of the 40 years but right. they have the ability to connect amazing dots that we can never imagine or our logic is built in a way that can never connect these dots and sometimes they astonish me <laughs> with some words like oh that's very inspiring <laughs> I haven't thought about that so yeah improvisation also goes for youngsters 100% of those kids score at, at, at perfect levels on those creativity tests and if you put those adults on the same test, it's only 2% that are left. So we are systematically taught over the years to not be, to not do diver divergent thinking because you have to do wrong or right or good or bad. So that's why I keep advocating. We need to retrain that muscle because everybody else is trying to get it out of us. <laughs> That's true. And what about time, the time aspect or the time factor in entrepreneurship, where entrepreneurs need to act quickly to be in the market and be market leaders, not just wait, wait, wait until some other market leader in other country come up with the idea, market it, be successful, and then they find themselves market followers or their idea is dead because of the competition. How, what are your insights about this type of time? Well, that's, that's the reason why, you know, this improvisation is important, like this moving forward phase. And, you know, the whole theory of effectuation is built on that where, you know, you have something and then you just have to move forward and then evaluate and shape it and use whatever resources you have to come up with a solution. But if you wait and take the management uh, approach and say, let me make a whole complete plan first <laughs> and get everything ready and perfect in place and then move, well, then you missed it. <laughs> let, let me ask Monica this question. And how do you use any of this in teaching arts administration to students? And if, how do you use it? How's this changed? How does it get into the curriculum? 
I, I use it a lot in A, being practice approached approach and then making them come up with new solutions, you know, and it works really great in the mu in music industry teaching where you have to come up with new solutions all the time in the market that's changing like this every day. <laughs> I noticed though in, in the more management aspect, you know, since we only have those 2% left that are willing to do this, when you starting to push them and say, come up with things, you know, let's try new things. They're not easily, they're the 98% that are not ready. It, it, will, it will take them and, and sometimes kicking and screaming. And that's, you know, and that's very tricky for a teacher too, because they tell you they're kicking and screaming. <laughs> so, you know, like everything else that you still have to trial and error and figure out <laughs> what works, how far you can you push. But um, in arts entrepreneurship education, I'm, I'm convinced that we have to find this new balance of, of integrating exercises, ways of, of creating these new habits of using your improvisation brain, coming up with ideas. And it's not traditionally done and it'll take a minute, you know? <laughs> um, I, was, I was thinking, and I wonder what David thinks about it and Monica, that uh, it's uh, improvisation and more of a, this experimental regime or experimental mode of, of uh, work of creating things is, is mainly for entrepreneurs, for companies that are all, is still looking for their business model, still looking for their customers, markets, products. They try to come up with new solutions. But it's also that it will also be true for the large firms who, who may want to, you know, who compete with those young uh, startups and, and minds. They also want to, to be innovative. They also want to lead the market. They also want to introduce new products. So how is that model of the of the jazz jam session, the model of improvisation in teams, can be can become a good tool for the large firms? Uh, I won't say Google, but the companies less, uh, relatively larger than let's say non SMEs. Where where do they can learn and, and adopt uh, this this framework? Is there a hope for them? Is there hope for them? I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yes, absolutely. They can adopt it. And just in, in ways you work in a team or, you know, there's the story of the Pixar studios where they by purpose designed the building that the bathroom and the cafeteria was on the bottom floor. And everybody had to like go at one point during the day to the bathroom or the cafeteria. <laughs> so you have these accidental improvised encounters of, of exchange, you know, so cultivating spaces, places, opportunities to, to let these encounters and these moments happen in, in the same way. And, and, and then of course for team meeting, you know, using the toolbox to check do we have the ideal and group? in the end it, it's not only about the the band the jazz band or just that a, a team we not work in the silos we work at a part of a bigger community and there might be more more teams within a larger company and and of course making sure that they speak to each other and again this framework and the this paper uh is directing us towards it saying how can we learn from also from the external uh, from the context from the external environment Right, maybe we've got maybe last question from Maha. Uh, yeah, last is... question for you, Maxi. Oh, is it for me? <laughs> yeah. What are the main findings of the paper? And uh, when we apply the Jazz Jam Session model to innovation in teams. Right, thanks very much, Maha. Uh, great question, of course. And and uh, the, the challenge was in this paper is to translate of course, the model and find the, the measurement, because conceptually we, we understand that at the concept concept level, it may work very well. But then when you go there and you want to quantify things and you want to statistically prove that there is a relationship between improvisation and innovation. So you would need to find a measurement of every factor. So we were lucky by pulling different data sets in the UK to, in fact, to, cre to create the measurement for each element of the Jazz Jam Session model for each set of the seven elements. 
And we try different models. So we try the model of improvisation directly affecting innovation. And we say, yes, it does. We tried the model looking at those all seven factors, including improvisation and their relationship to innovation. And we see there is a strong relationship. Uh, then we try a different model of saying, well, what about if these factors do not directly affect innovation, but they trigger the improvisation and then improvisation in this, like a second step would affect innovation. So it's as a, like a two-step model. So knowledge, uh, mentoring, leadership, community, that would all drive your improvisation. And then this improvisation will lead to innovation. Well, we found that this model was a weaker and in particularly statistically weaker. So it looks like there is a stronger relationship with each and every element of the Jazz Jam Session model. Of course, the, the, the size of the impact is very different because you know it's hard to compare. You say, what is 1% increase in investment in leadership versus 1% increase investment in, in training? You know, So it, it, it's hard to really compare this effect because they are very qualitative, they're, very, they're, they're conceptual. Uh, however, the, the, uh, the art of the paper and the art of applied management and applied entrepreneurship is in fact in, in capturing this relationship. So we in fact were able to mathematically estimate the model and, and get that strength and the size of the relationship done. However, the way we measure it, um, we measure leadership training, the community, et cetera, is different. And so the main finding is that it is each and every factor would matter for the extent the company decides on innovating and how much uh, they go ahead and the extent of the innovation. The improvisation is definitely leading the way. And for example, 1% investment, increase investment in training, only 1% increase investment in training for innovation and for improvisation would increase innovation for up to 33%, which is, which is a really a, a big, a significantly big number just for 1% increase in innovative training for improvisation. And so the improvisation, in fact, this is the key factor to affect innovation in teams. And then there are the factors in the Jazz Jam Session framework, um, internal team factors, and also environment would moderate this relationship, which means when those factors increase or the concentration of those factors increases, then the relationship between improvisation and innovation also becomes stronger. So the message to the scholars to the managers and to entrepreneurs is do not give up on improvisation and investing in improvisation but also keep in mind that there are other team factors like mentoring like leadership like knowledge and there's also community support that need to be put together for the really for this relationship really flourish and really excel wow thank you so much maxime for this answer and uh, yeah, I think this, this paper is very inspiring. And um, the improvisation might be the dynamics of the, of the, the, the action inter, interaction in the, in the lean uh, startup strategy, how you apply lean startup strategy, how you are lean, how you're responsive. And in every small step, you can apply improvisation and innovation to find more solutions to the small obstacles or the big obstacles that face you in the entrepreneurial journey. That's um, very inspiring, I think. What do you think, David? Do you have more comments here? I say thanks very much uh, to, uh, to Maha, to my, my, uh, my colleagues and friends, my dear colleagues and friends, uh, Monica and Maxim. And if we're lucky, maybe we'll get some uh, um, fade out music so uh, uh, that's all I want for Christmas. <laughs> all we want for Christmas is jazz. It's jazz. All yes. we want for Christmas is jazz. <laughs> Thank you so much for this great conversation. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to the next inspiring paper and how to improve and serve entrepreneurship for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Monica, the floor is yours. <laughs>
That was that was yeah. a lot of fun. That was fun. Thanks that so was much. improvised, right? <laughs> well, like it should be, right? <laughs> so, are you kind of editing this together?